What's up YouTube? Blood City Nerd back with another video and today I want to talk about the yesterday's Monday Night Raw results and my honest opinion on it. Let's get right into it. Now I'll be reading an article from the Bleach Report and their analysis and I'll tell you if I do agree or disagree with it overall. <clears throat> now according, no excuse me, before I get started like this was the last Raw of the decade as they kept repeating throughout the show. You know, whenever there's something like this, you know, going on, they like to repeat it, like season premiere, this, that, and the other. You know how they do. They like to hype up that stuff. And for the last Raw, overall, honestly, it was a, it was a decent show. Decent show overall. And they kicked it off with um, Kevin Owens and then Seth Rollins versus AOP again <clears throat> in their little opening monologue. Now, Monday Night Raw is like slick, kind of go, going back to their old formula of having one superstar have a 20-minute monologue, other superstar responds with theirs, and then they duke it out for like two minutes, and then they get into a match or whatever. I mean, that's been done over and over, but if I don't know how, how often they want to keep doing that, because, you know, they've, they've, it's been done before. Even though I do like the feud between Kevin Owens and uh, Seth Rollins and AOP right now. And then they got some more Joe in the mix. Teaming up with Kevin Owens to kind of even the odds just a little bit. Even though it's like three versus two. But I think it'll work if, if they continue to... Um, if they just really sit down and buckle down and think about what they want to do with it. And uh, how it should continue on. Because this is a really great feud that can really stretch maybe past the Royal Rumble. They could probably end it at Fastlane or something. But just please don't, please WWE, do not mess this one up. This I could actually see good potential with you know the Rollins versus uh, Kevin Owens since they got Kevin Owens babyface now, and then he's he's pretty over. He's pretty over as a babyface right now, and they don't need to ruin that at all. Next, we have Aleister Black versus Buddy Murphy once again. You know, overall, this is a decent match, but I don't know if we really needed Aleister Black to win once again because now it, it's just like he's just jobbing. Oh, excuse me, Buddy Murphy's just jobbing up Aleister now. The win didn't really do much for him, in my humble opinion. It's like, okay, we got Aleister Black on top again. I thought it would kind of go back and forth a little bit so Buddy Murphy could kind of earn his debt versus uh, Aleister Black because he's lost twice to him now twice maybe three times I, but I but I'm pretty I'm pretty solid on it twice but I don't, I don't know how, what, what's what else is next for this particular feud because it's like okay you had Buddy Murphy lose twice now what but yeah that's just that's my that's my take on that I don't, I don't really think much of that at this point Eric Rowan I, I really don't care at this point he just He's, he's going to defeat drivers week after week after week at this point until they find him an actual opponent. Now, Charlotte Brothers and Natalya. Okay, this was... A, I, I really like uh, watching this match. Charlotte opens up with her her uh, promo herself to um, the WWE Universe because she hasn't yet to enter the uh, Royal Rumble. She, she missed the uh, first two women's because she was already champ at the time. And now, <clears throat> she wants to enter the Royal Rumble, and, and she may potentially win it and go to WrestleMania once again. But that that would that would make several times like consistently she she's gone to WrestleMania. I don't know. They might they might have someone else get it, but they just want her to kind of hype up the women's Royal Rumble a little bit more, and um, you know, give her a chance to really prove herself to why she's the queen of WWE. Because she doesn't want to just call herself that and not back it up, which is something I can respect. Next. We have the OC versus the Street Profits. Now, I did like the opening of this one. I did enjoy the fact that uh, Street Profits came in and kind of made fun of their name because the OC was originally like a teen drama on Fox like a long time ago. And <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that one made me laugh. And... Uh, the fact that they got a win over the Street Profits this time was pretty good. And now they have a shot at the Tag Team Championships next week on Raw versus 
the Viking Raiders and the OC in a triple threat match. I think that would be really entertaining to watch. Will the Street Profits come on top? I don't know. It, it's a... Eh, I, I, I would really want them to come out on top, but who knows? The uh, OC might get this one since they are the quote-unquote best tag team in the world. Who knows? Next, 201 handicap match, Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, Drew McIntyre. Eh, I, I don't really think much of that. Now the Viper strikes again. Apparently, apparently the Randy Orton was doing a little kayfabe injury in this segment, which I was kind of digging because I, 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 I'm not going to lie to you. I thought he was really hurt at first because he sold that uh, messed up knee pretty well. Now, he will face... AJ Styles soon at the Royal Rumble. And I think that'll be fun to watch because these two will definitely put on an incredible match. And then they keep building up their feud the way they are now. It'll definitely work out. I think it'll definitely work out best. Now we have Ricochet versus Andrade. Now, Andrade as a heel has been a... Okay, he's... Somewhat of a fighting champion, even though he uses Zelina, he has Zelina Vega interfere for him and push Ricochet off the top rope, hammerlock DDT for the win. You know, I think I think I think he'll make a pretty good heel champion. You know, for the time being, and when they have until they have uh, him and Rey Mysterio go at it again for the uh, United States Championship since Rey lost it in Madison Square Garden. You know, I I think this will I think him as United States champion and as a heel. It's, it's gonna it's gonna work out pretty well, but uh, who knows? Ray might get it back, and they might give him a much longer run with the uh, the championship. Only time will tell. Now we have the f main event, or excuse me, the final segment of the show: Bobby Lashley and Lana's wedding. <laughs> and as I expected. It was gonna. It was not gonna end in, you know, peacefully or anything. Like, if you if you if you've been watching Raw for a long time, like I have, you understand. Like, settings like this do not end well. It's gonna end in a huge, real messy Jerry Springer type fight, and that's exactly what happened. They had a couple of people come out and say, "I object." People from Bobby's past and Lana's past spilling all the dirt, and then Lana's like, "Oh no 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 no." She wanted. She didn't want any of that. <laughs> she just. She just wanted to continue on with the wedding, and she even wrote Bobby's vows for him. I was like, okay, mine. <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, Liv Morgan comes out of nowhere and makes the most awkward debut I've ever seen, just by coming down there, saying that she's still in love, and then Bobby Lashley assumes that she's talking about him. <laughs> And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about you, Bobby. I'm talking about Lana. <laughs> and yeah, the crowd the crowd was kind of in shock, but I was like, eh, okay. The guy doing this little lesbian angle thing for a little repackaging. I kind of want to see how this will go. Maybe they might, this might work out. This is kind of early right now, but I saw a lot of people people complaining online that she's not sister abigail it's like i don't know how that would work out me personally and at this point we didn't get sister abigail months ago year two years ago one year ago i don't think we we're ever gonna get it so i'm not gonna hold my breath for that anymore and yeah they ended raw with a nice little messy jerry springer segment oh, and rusev pops out of that cake out of nowhere which i kind of expected which i really kind of expected <laughs> and he just destroys the whole set Beating up Bobby Lashley, I thought that was pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie, I mean, it was it was a pretty awkward segment, but overall I thought it was kind of funny. You know, with certain with certain spots and the interruptions were kind of getting a little too redundant, but overall, not bad. It wasn't like the best like messy segment I've seen on Raw, but wasn't bad either. But anyways, that's my thoughts on Monday Night Raw. Let me know yours in the comment section below. Make sure you click the link in below and make sure you follow my Facebook. I really appreciate you guys liking, sharing, and watching my videos. It really means a lot to me. Make sure you guys, uh, you know, leave a comment. Share this with your friends. I'm Bluff City Nerd, and I'm out of here. Peace.